Dr. Wendy Walsh, welcome to my live stream. So nice to see everybody. It's Wednesday at six. I know I missed last week. I was on vacay. What can I say? I was in the country. I went camping in the Redwood Forest in Northern California. It was great. Um, let me put my other banner up. So come on board. And the first thing I love people to do is tell me where they're watching from. So and give me a little hello. Hey, Jonesy, can you check your Instagram? Because I don't see any comments yet to make sure I press the right button and that I'm live. Because usually they just fly up with a bunch of hellos and hand waves and tell me where they are and I don't see anything. That's what I did, I guess. Okay, so Instagram's coming on late. There they are. Hi everybody, let me open the comments over here on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, I can see where, hello, there's my Linda from, but let me put some glasses on so I can see everybody who's here. Um, uh, hi, Vincent, how are you? Tell me where you're watching from. I always like to hear. Hi, Linda from Pasadena. Hello, Lisa from Santa Barbara. Good to see you. Hello from Michigan, Mia. Nice to see you. Sydney's always here. Do you have some good questions, Sydney? Please, I hope you have some good questions. She, I think she does her homework all week long. She or he. I, there's no picture, Sydney, so I hate to put a gender on people when I don't know, so forgive me if I've been wrong. Brian's with me. Hi, Brian. You're probably my longest follower. Can I just call you a friend now because, oh my gosh, is it 10 years? How long do you think it's been? Super long time. Hello, Jed from Orlando. Good to see you. Uh, hi from Long Island. Who else have I got? New Lenox, Illinois. Hi, Paul. I don't know where you're watching from. Oh, Futun from Jordan. Welcome. I love the international followers. Uh, ocean Cruise with John. Where are you watching from? On an ocean cruise. Um, hello from Valencia. Who's that? Mon Monotron. These glasses are so dirty, and I'm sure the reflection is such, too. Um, hello from Australia. Hi, Karen. Nice to see you down under. So it's tomorrow morning at like 11 a.m. for you or something. Uh, so... If you've noticed on my screen, I'm going to start with a big announcement. I'm going to end with a hello, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Nice to see you all on board. Hi, Janice from Camarillo. I can't wait to get back to Camarillo, Janice. School starts next week. So if any of you are students in any of the three classes I'm teaching this semester, I'm very excited. Hi, Margaret from Tennessee. Nice to see you, Margaret. Uh, hello, Jana from Brazil, you're a long way away. Instagram is far more international, I think, than some of the other socials, it's fascinating. Um, so I'm gonna start with an announcement and I'm gonna end with the same announcement because you guys are here tonight, you're special, you're what I would call my closest peeps online. And so you know I've been mentioning that I'm going on to Patreon soon. Uh, I think September 1st is we'll do the official launch. So what I did is I put some super, super, super low prices for early adopters, like literally as little as $4 a month, just because I want to iron out the kinks with people who will forgive me, people who love me and people who can send me messages and go, hey, you know, this link isn't working, or uh, you should do your live stream more often, or how do I enter to win your contest for a free one-on-one -on -one session and all the things that you're going to write to me about. So can I ask a giant favor? Go on to patreon.com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh. Sign up for one month. It's four bucks. You know, how much do you lose for four bucks? But what I'm going to do, hello from Montreal. How are you? Asthma. Um, is what I'm going to do is I'm going to do far more live streams. I'm going to do giveaways for private sessions. All my podcasts are going to be behind the paywall over there at Patreon. Um, I got rights to some of my books. So I'm releasing some of the chapters. I'm writing new material. And my social media is going to become a place of tiny little hits of information that will bring people over. And the reason why I'm doing this so that you will all understand is that, um, I, as you know, during COVID, we went out of production on Mating Matters, my podcast, and my partner and employer, iHeartMedia, who I love very much, has allowed me to take ownership of the 50 episodes of Mating Matters. So they're going to disappear on the internet soon, everybody. Uh, if you haven't listened for free, you can also run and do that real quick. Um, and then how do you spell Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash D-R Wendy Walsh. Um, I love your question, Miguel. I'll get to it in a minute. I'll tell you where girls like me are hiding. Um, and so what I want to do is just, you know, for a few weeks, 
just try it out with people who know me and like me because I'm just learning the tech and I'm running it all myself. So um, anyway, we're going to do giveaways for private sessions where I want to, I, the only reason I want to use the money is to produce more episodes. So iHeart has given me those episodes and allowed me to go back into production all on my own, but I've got to pay for it. So I thought to myself, if I could just get 1000 followers on Patreon and Lord knows on my social media, I have almost a million followers across four or five different networks. Um, then I could go into production and give you those great episodes of Mating Matters. And you know why my eyes crying? It's not that you make me sad. It's because yesterday I had a long shoot and I got like, I don't know, makeup or eyelash glue or something. Yes, you can register today. It is open for what I call early adopters before the price goes up. So you just go to patreon.com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh and you will see more of me over there than you ever saw on my social media very soon. Okay, yes, I'm drinking wine. There's no FCC rules here. We can do whatever we want. And I'll tell you why. I was building all my courses on Canvas. If any of my students are watching, you're also, your job is to look at my Canvas courses and tell me if I have made a mistake somewhere and an assignment date is different than something else that's not matching up. Because I like to think of myself as a broad strokes creative person, but today I had to be a highly conscientious detail oriented person. So I had a lot of caffeine all day. Can't you tell? I'm not talking too fast, am I? Had a lot of caffeine. And so I need a little wine to cut it. <laughs> Terrible. Hmm. Okay. So are, am, here's some questions now. Am I based in California? Yes, I am in Los Angeles. I am in the process of planning a live show though, and we're going on tour. So there'll be more about that as that comes up. Hello from Dallas. Nice to see you. Um, what other questions did I just see? Someone asked me, okay, let's get into relationship questions. Ice wine. Oh, 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 I know what you're laughing at. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> this is a $45 bottle of French Sancerre. It is such a beautiful wine. And anybody who knows wine would know that I am ruining it by putting it on ice. I just like super cold wine. And I like <laughs> no. and I like wine to be a little watered down. I don't know, because I'm on kind of a low sugar diet and wine is strong to me. So there we go. Okay. The question was, how can I find a girl like you? Well, she's busy working and getting her education. I will say that. Uh, depending on what age you're looking for, she's either on a college campus or working on a college campus or living in a college town or working in news or working in a law firm. But if you're talking about a girl like me, and I'm, I'm going to just throw this out there, who has a lot of compassion, she's volunteering. I literally spent my 20s before I had kids just working to save the lives of kids everywhere. And I did so much volunteering. And that's where compassionate people find each other. So don't be shy. Just go out there and join a group. Uh, Rodney, it's true. Even red wine I keep in the fridge. It is much better chilled. I know real wine people would think we are just terrible people, but oh well. I'm sorry, I have to put my glasses on so I could read some of your, oh, but they're so dirty. It's like not helping. Uh, Joey's back. Hi, Joey. You've been away for a while, but now you're back. Uh, good to know. Any more questions here over on Facebook, YouTube? What else besides the hellos? Um, any questions about relationships, attachment? I just posted a video. On, yeah, we like things cold, Brian. That's what it is. Um, I just posted a video on TikTok a few minutes ago. Um, it was, it, there's a thing on TikTok called a stitch where you take somebody's video and you stitch it to something like you make a comment about it. And it was the cutest video. It was a girl with her phone, taking it on herself in a nightclub bathroom with all the drunk girls outside the stall. And all she did is yelled really loud. Do you think I should text him? And every girl in unison, in the bathroom, screamed, no, don't text him. So I did a little video about how egg does not chase sperm, okay? And all genders want to work for something. And we need to give our potential mates the gift of getting to work for us, right? So it's not playing hard to get, it's giving them the gift of making them really understand your value. Okay. Um, oh, Tennis Guru, I'm so sorry to hear this. Let's put this up. Tennis Guru says, I have very bad anxiety when my boyfriend doesn't give me the reassurance I need. What can I do? Uh, she's secure. I'm anxious. Um, okay. Um, 
this is really common, okay? And I want you to know that this is your job. It's a nacho problem. It's not their problem. It's your problem. And it's about learning to contain yourself. So when you feel that anxiety coming on and you're thinking, I'm not good enough unless they tell me I'm good enough, then you need to find ways to self-console. You need to find ways to remind yourself how lovable you are. And sometimes that just means a phone a lifeline. Like literally, there's somebody in your life who loves you just for you. And it may be a relative, it may be a friend, uh, but reach out to them and, and get into a different part of your brain. There's also something I talk about a lot called thought stopping, right? Where you can literally, when you feel those thoughts of, oh, they don't really like me or they're going to break up with her and maybe they're fooling around on me or where are they, to literally thought, stop that thought and insert it with a new thought. And the new thought should be, I am lovable. Everything's going to be okay. And if you can repeat that in your brain over and over and over again, it actually can rewire your brain. And I know I've used this example before, but if you want evidence of it, you can have a conversation in a room. And if there's a dog in the room and you say anything about any of their favorite words, like walk, bone, whatever, car, ride, whatever they like, um, they will get very, very excited. And your brain is listening to everything you say. So we must replace it with loving thoughts and we must sometimes reparent ourselves. Okay. Um, what we do... Um, Sydney, actually, this is the first time I don't understand. Oh, I don't know what the Mandela effect is. Can someone look it up and explain it to me? Saves me a Google. Um, up on Instagram, my boyfriend asked for a break after an argument that we didn't get to talk about. He feels I crossed a boundary, which is not talking about a certain topic. Honestly, the topic was about, fly girl, what was it about? doesn't matter. The truth is, this isn't a healthy relationship. You should be able to talk about all the tender things. That's what intimacy is. I'm so sorry if this person, oh, his ex. Uh, well, it depends what the conversation was with his ex, okay? Because he wants to put her somewhere in a back compartment. If it is that he's still having a relationship with his ex, even one where it's full of conflict now, but he, she's owning or he is owning a lot of um, mental real estate, uh, then you have a right to bring it up because you're occupying that real estate too and you want to make sure that you have the primary share. On the other hand, if you're falsely being jealous of somebody who's no longer really in his life, then let it go. However, the way you deal with things is by talking about them. And if he's shutting you out and giving you the silent treatment, this doesn't bode well for long-term dynamics, right? When it will get really tough. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, this is a sensitive one. How do I tell a loved one, my brother who's 41, that they need counseling? He was present when my dad died, tried to save him, and blames himself. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine that trauma? Sierra, I'm so sorry you're going through this. You know, do, sometimes doing a little research and finding some affordable free therapists can help people. But, you know, you can bring a horse to water all day and you can't make them drink. Um, I would say the best thing to get a loved one into therapy is to go to therapy yourself and talk to a therapist about the ways you can react to them. You see, every system, a family system, no matter your age, a friend system, a workplace system is a system. And if you change one cog in the wheel, it can have an impact on others. But I know you're really asking me what words one would use to say, hey, you need to see somebody. And I think the answer is you need to talk about your feelings. I'm worried about you. I noticed this and I felt this. I want to see you happier. What can I do to help you get happier? Is there someone you want to talk to? So again, it's never defend like you need to go to therapy or you have a problem. Mm -mm, we don't want to say that. Okay. It's all about your feelings and how it's impacting you. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Uh, Okay. What an excellent question, Cindy. What do you do? Just research all week and give me the best questions. Sydney's question is, are attachment styles in the DSM-5 Diagnostic Institute Manual of Mental Disorders 
And the answer is no, because they're not considered a mental disorder. They're considered a way of relating. Now, if one has an anxious attachment style, they might have co comorbid and diagnosable anxiety or depression. Or if somebody has a completely avoidant attachment style, they might also be so avoidant that they have so little empathy that they might also have a personality disorder and be uh, a sociopath, right? And so those kind of diagnoses would be in there. So the answer is attachment style is not a diagnosis. It's a style of relating, but it's often comorbid with a host of other mental difficulties. It, you know, rarely does anybody have one diagnosis, by the way. Uh, ah, so somebody asked me, I've seen my therapist for a while now and I'm not feeling it with her. Okay, this is another really excellent question. Thank you so much. And the follow-up question is, can I change therapists? Of course, you can change therapists at any time. But usually when we want to leave therapy is right before a big breakthrough. Some progress is about to happen. And the most important thing I want you to talk to your therapist about is the fact that you're not feeling it. Because a good therapist will use that as grist for the mill and explore it with you. So before you leave, I would use your feelings to explore your feelings and then decide whether you're going to leave or not. The most important thing, everyone, please listen to this. Whenever you want to quit therapy, and we all want to do it all the time. I was thinking this week you know, maybe I should quit therapy again because I've quit a number of times in my life, but I'm always happier when I'm in therapy. But I thought, yeah, maybe I should. And then I reminded myself, usually when we want to quit is when we're very close to a breakthrough because that's our brain going, I want to save myself from this intimacy. It's scary. But thank you for asking that. Um, okay. How's it going? It's going great. Thank you for the fantastic answers. You're welcome. Good question. Uh, weekly for three years. Look, I was the first time I went to therapy. It was once or twice a week for seven years. I, the thing that got me there is I was overwhelmed with pregnancy hormones with my first kid. And I literally cried every day. I mean, some people say I'm happy when I'm pregnant. No, I cried. It was like PMS times 10. But remember this, whether it's PMS or pregnancy hormones or postpartum, whatever, your, your brain doesn't invent new feelings. It just amplifies them right? So I had these amplified feelings that were great to explore in therapy. And then I left therapy after seven years. And then I went back to the same therapist 12 years later, when my daughter was graduating high school, and I was having empty nest symptoms. symptoms. Okay, question up here from Miguel. How did you forget about your ex? Well, you should never forget about your ex. But I think the question really is, how do you let go of the attachment feelings or the anger or whatever? And, you know, I always tell myself that forgiveness is a gift to yourself because resentment, I know you've probably heard this before, resentment is like drinking poison and hoping somebody else will die. And one of the things I always do, especially to anybody who's ever mistreated me, is I try to analyze them and I try to come up, doesn't matter if it's true or not, I try to come up with some kind of narrative about why they could possibly have done that. And it's never because I'm a bad person. It's always because they had a bad childhood, a bad day, a bad whatever. And so once I come up with that narrative where I'm actually feeling compassion for them, then I'm able to let it go and forgive. Hello, I'm 33 and my husband of 10 years who I, I had a fairy tale relationship with, oh, yo, yo, passed away two years ago. I'm so sorry. I always miss the type of relationship I had with him, but I'm not sure if I'm ready to date. Well, here's what I want you to know. Dating doesn't mean getting married. Dating means practicing. You see, relationships are a gymnasium for our minds. And basically you're saying to me, I'm out of shape. I think, how can I get into shape before I go dating? Mental shape, emotional shape, right? And the answer is you do it by dating. You do it by just having a cup of coffee with a stranger and chatting and not acting like this is going to be forever or a boyfriend or that you need to find somebody. Just take your time and tell these people from the very beginning, I'm just dipping my toe back in. I don't know what I'm doing here. You know, one time, a couple of years ago, I was on dating apps and um, I wasn't really ready to have a full-time relationship. I still had kids in the nest and whatever, but I was feeling lonely, right? Um I'm going to put Sydney's question up next so that I can remember to answer it. Um, anyway, 
I'm one of those who gets off the app very quickly. I think of dating apps as a meeting app. And within a few texts, I'm like, here's my phone number. Just give me a call. We'll chat. Ladies, you can use a Google phone number. You can block your number later. Stop worrying about giving your phone number out. Why is it so dangerous? Just, you know, block it. Anyway, uh, so I got on the phone with this guy. and We had such a delightful conversation. Now, his wife had recently passed away. And we talked a couple times and he was clearly still grieving and not ready. And I probably wasn't ready either. And he, it was such a nice conversation. And he was English, of course. He had an English accent, which is always fun for Americans and Canadians to listen to. And when I said to him, you know, I sent him a text later. I probably, you know, the timing's not right. A romance isn't in the card for us. He wrote me the nicest text ever. He said, just spending that time on the phone with you just sort of renewed my idea that maybe love is out there for me and maybe it's time. And I just felt so inspired talking to you or whatever. And he was just lovely. And I was lovely. The timing was wrong. I wasn't lovely. He was lovely. Uh, but the timing was wrong. And we weren't ready. But it was still practice. It was practice for him. It was practice for him to be reminded who he was separate from a grieving husband, right? Uh, question. Can I talk about physical attraction and chemistry and how important it is. It's far more important to men than it is to women. Honestly, you guys know that. You can be not so tall. You could have lost all your hair and even have a little pot belly. But if you have a fat wallet, you will turn heads. Uh, just saying, women are more concerned with brains, kindness, and resources. Men, of course, are anthropologically triggered by beauty, youth and beauty. And even though we know that peers are attracted to peers across the lifespan. So 30 year olds are mostly attracted to 30 year olds or within five to seven years, people in their forties, people in their fifties, sixties, peers, biological peers are attracted to peers. But if a guy's in his fifties and he's looking for a 50 year old woman, who's going to have all the same life experience and references that he has, he's going to look for the youngest prettiest 50 year old woman, because he's still triggered by this whole fertility thing. Remember, we evolved to be looking for mates who can reproduce. And that's really what beauty is about. Clean skin, symmetrical features, and an hourglass figure indicate fertility. And so your eyes are being tricked by that. Uh, but after a while, everybody's at home with no makeup in their sweatpants, folks. And yeah, even you guys, um, we wish you'd put on makeup sometime. No, I'm joking. So, um, Relationships have to be based on a whole lot more than that after a while, but they're the beginning thing. Okay, Sydney says, how can you not numb vulnerability? And I think what you're asking is, if you are afraid to be authentic and vulnerable, how can you go forward anyway? And the answer is, you have to learn to tolerate shame. You have to learn to tolerate embarrassment. Because being emotionally vulnerable is about taking risks. It's about showing a piece of yourself that somebody might not like. But you have to have another solid core inside yourself that knows that you're lovable. And it's that core that will sustain you while you're practicing vulnerability. Uh, at the gym, I got the little boys hitting me hitting in me before my fellow grandpas. Well, that's true. You know, there are all kinds of, because, you know, the young guys, sorry, ladies, you cougars who think you're so fabulous, young guys will shoot at anything. They have so much testosterone. I'm sorry. It's not you. It's just that you're available. Uh, okay. <laughs> mm. Here's a question. Let me see what this one. Kareem says, do you have any strategies to deal with an ex who is still filled with resentment and you must consider seeing due to shared custody? Yes. So the most important bit of advice I can give is this. You must live with their resentment and live with their projections of you. Meaning that if there's a piece of you that wants to prove to them that you've changed, prove to them that you're a good father, prove that you will never win because they're living in their fantasy. For whatever reason, in order to stay separate from you, they have to be mad at you. And interesting enough, plenty of exes stay in attachment relationships with people, but now through conflict. You hear about the couples that go back and forth to court for everything for years and years and years, um, because that's their way of staying attached. So to be honest, let her be or him be as a, 
as resentful as they want, but don't let it impact your happiness because it doesn't matter what they think of you. It matters what your values are. It matters how much you love your kids. And don't get into arguments about the facts where she or he will say, you did this or you did that. Just smile and nod and say, I guess that's how you feel. And that's it. Just leave it there. How to cope with a girlfriend who watched your TikTok and slowed down sexual pace too much. <laughs> Wait, you're already in a sexual relationship and now she's trying to withdraw it? I hope that's not the case because I do not preach that at all. Um, but you're talking maybe about an early relationship and I wouldn't even call that a girlfriend yet. I would call it an early dating relationship. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Well, the answer is take the time to build the intimacy and the friendship. And if sex doesn't follow along with that, then you're going to have to move on, right? You have to make a decision whether it's being reciprocal or not. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, dark berry juice. I just, I go on vacation too, you know. I went camping in the Redwood Forest. I have, okay, so I have two lives in my mind and in real life. So in LA, I have a... Uh, you know, electric car, but somewhere else I have a vacation property and I have a Ford F-150, you know, cause I'm in the country and I got a truck tent for it. And I drove to the Redwood forest with my boyfriend and we camped it amongst these giant, beautiful redwood trees. And it was beautiful. Uh, we were near Jedediah. Bad luck. We were, we were near Jedediah. We actually stayed at rambling redwoods. It was another 30 minutes past that. Uh, Oh, you, call, you were the one who called KFI and asked me for the date. <laughs> so we take calls on my radio show, for those who don't know, on Sundays from four to six or four to seven, depending on how long, how much time they give me, uh, Pacific time, uh, on iHeartRadio, Dr. Wendy Wells show. And for two or three segments, I take calls with relationship questions. And producer Kayla Austin is the one who um, lets the calls in. And she let in a call where somebody asked me for a date on air, but I have a boyfriend. Of course I do. Uh, and my boyfriend was listening and he was texting me going, what, what is Kayla doing? Is she your dating service now? It was kind of funny. Uh, what was my PhD topic and dissertation? Thank you for asking. Another one of my favorite questions. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to put tennis guru back up too. Yes, it's good. Okay. So I followed a hundred pregnant women for a year. I gave them an attachment test, put them into categories of, you know, avoidant, anxious, disorganized, secure. And then I caught up with them at four months postpartum and I looked at their ability to breastfeed. So my title was the relationship between romantic attachment style and breastfeeding outcomes. My hypothesis was that those women who were avoidant couldn't tolerate the intimacy of a breastfeeding relationship. Believe it or not, the mother-child breastfeeding relationship is the most intimate relationship of the lifespan. Think about it. A newborn baby nurses for 20 minutes each breast with a little burp and a diaper change in between and around the clock at the beginning, like every hour and a half as they're trying to bring in more milk. That's seven hours. You're staring into somebody's eyes, skin to skin contact, and they're stimulating you. They're sucking on you, right? Seven hours out of 24 hours. And so my theory was that these avoidant women would have less successful breastfeeding outcomes. What I discovered as I was going to all the, you know, labor prep classes and, uh, you know, pregnancy yoga classes and whatever, handing out my flyers saying, you can win a free spa day, just fill out my forms, be part of my research study. Um, I learned that avoidant people do not sign up for these studies. So that particular group was too small to make full statistical uh, an assumption. However, um, I did develop an instrument called the Barriers to Breastfeeding Survey that I wrote a lot about. So anyway, there it's boring, right? Okay. Tennis Guru asks, what's one green flag to look for in dating? The biggest green flag out there is that when you express something that's a little bit vulnerable and a little bit authentic, that they respond with compassion and understanding. The avoidant person will change the subject or laugh like it's a funny thing. Uh, sometimes the anxious people also will, you know, give a lot of empathy, but at like too much, they're over the top because they get fused and they can't remember whose problem is whose. 
So test the waters by being real and authentic and see how they respond. I asked uh, my boyfriend, actually, someone had asked me like, what did he see in your, how did he know, you know, cause he was dating a bunch of people on dating apps too. And he, he told me a particularly vulnerable story on our first coffee because I said, that's so silly on our first coffee. I said, look, we can all pretend to be the people that we wish we are, but why don't we each tell a story about why we think we're completely undateable. So we started out with negative. And so he told me the story, which I won't disclose cause I want to protect him. But I, um, he told me later, that I expressed a lot of understanding and compassion. And that was the thing that made him go, huh, that's interesting. Uh, what to say to a 10 year boyfriend who says he has no capacity because of work to give you the attention you need? Well, you need to analyze whether the amount of attention you need is based on your own insecurity and the reassurance that you might need from him that's not fair to put on him for your happiness or whether he literally is checked out and is not investing in the relationship. So once you can answer that question, like, is it me or is it him? What's happening here? Then you'll know what to do. All right, the question, oh, did that one. I need some wine. Okay. Mm. Yeah, Sydney's got this question about introverts. You know, I wish I knew the answer to this, Sydney. The question is, how can introverts step outside their comfort zone and start meeting new people? Well. Mm. Yeah. I'm an extrovert, so I don't have any experience with this. I have a highly introverted daughter that I have dragged around to everything and tried to get her to speak up and talk to people and whatever. And I asked her, you know, when you're silent and people are asking you questions and you're answering in one word, you know, they think you're being rude. And I said, what is going on in your brain? And she said, nothing. There's just a blank space where thoughts and words should be. And that's what social anxiety is. So for her, she brings what I call uh, an emotional seeing eye dog. When she has to go to any public place, she brings a friend with her who will do some of the talking for her. And I've also taught her to just like fake smile because people will react positively if they see a smile. So I go, even if you can't talk, use the muscles in your cheeks, like just have them up because um, at least people will be more positive to you. Uh, did I mean that I've been hurt before? Absolutely. I've been hurt before. That's the whole reason I'm in this business because I want to make sure that you guys never feel the pain that I felt in my life. And as you stay with me, you're going to see on and on and hear the stories. Although I want to be really clear. I do not think of myself as a victim, but when you hear some of my stories, you're going to be like, what had happened to you? I'm saving a lot of those stories for my closest followers who come to me on Patreon. Let me put that banner back up so that you guys can see it. So if you're just tuning in, remember that um, I am moving this live stream over to Patreon in September. And I set up my Patreon account with a very inexpensive early bird rate of only $4 a month because I want trusted followers who know me and can see that I'm just trying to figure out the tech and everything to come on board and be a partner with me in helping me iron the kinks out at the beginning. So if you see that things aren't posting right or it doesn't feel like value or whatever, I, I'd love to hear from you in a, a constructive criticism way. So that's what I did. I'm announcing it to you guys because you guys are the ones who are always here. So you just go to patreon.com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh. Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh. Uh, should we look for partners who can cope with our style or do we have to heal ourselves? I think it's the responsibility for all of us to heal ourselves, but we also need a compatible partner who's understanding, right? Um, I, I think it's fair to say that we should work on ourselves across a lifespan. Um, and so I, I, I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, if you have an anxious attachment style and you find yourself always, oh, it paused for some reason. Sorry, my live paused because a phone call came in. Um, I think if you... Um, have an anxious attachment style and you're attracted to avoidant people who cannot for sure tolerate your anxiety, then you need to move on. But if you're with somebody who has a secure attachment style, don't you owe it to them to 
work on healing yourself as well? Uh, that's a good question, Tammy. I don't know. Let's hear from people. Does anyone recommend meetup as a place to meet people? My opinion is if the meetup meets in the real world and they're doing something positive, like, or even just common interest, book group, uh, you know, a wine group, a gardening group, whatever you may be into, uh, then it's a great way to meet people who have similar interests. So anyway, I'm going to wrap now because I've been talking a long time and I want to finish my glass of wine. I got to cook dinner for Jones. So please, if you feel I am worthy, if you feel that you would like to honor me, I'm going to ask you, my most dedicated followers, to come over to patreon.com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh. Uh, put the link in your bio. I'm going to for the whole world in September, but right now it's just sort of like an early bird, just a few people, because I just want feedback. And it's only $4 a month to come on. You can quit any time. Um, but I just want to sort of iron out the kinks before I publicly put the link everywhere. So thank you for helping me for anyone who get it. If you can't afford it, I understand. I'll still be on social media, but my live streams are all going to go behind Patreon. Um, but thank you all for being with me. I really, you know, now that my nest is about to be empty soon, Carrington graduated college last year. Jones is starting at college now, uh, but she's at home. But my, the heavy lifting of motherhood is behind me. I have so much love in my heart that I want to give to everybody out there. Um, I don't want anybody to feel the pain that I felt in my life. And I know that some of you have experienced great trauma in your early lives and your model for love is faulty. And I want to show you the way to fix it I as best I can. I mean, I'm not a perfect person. I'm not a savior. But I do have a lot of knowledge that I'm just dying to share with people. So thank you for being with me. And thank you even more if you come over to Patreon, patreon.com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh. And um, we'll see you next Wednesday. I will definitely be here next Wednesday at 6 o'clock. So thanks for being with me. I'm going to cry. I don't know why. It's really emotional. Is it makeup in my eye or I'm actually starting to cry? <laughs> All right. You've never heard my backstory. Oh, Lord, you got a story you're going to hear. Go on to my TikTok. I've made a few lately, uh, but not the deep. Yeah. There's one about crying in a bathtub on Christmas Day because I was stood up by midnight at midnight mass the night before by a playboy after both my parents had just died. That was a wild day. Um, but anyway, I used all my pain to grow, right? Uh, and as a tease, terrible, uh, I once ended up knocked unconscious by someone I loved. And so, yes, I'm also a survivor of domestic violence. Um, I think we should have more compassion for the men out there and not call them perpetrators, but call them our brothers and uncles. And we need to stop hitting little boys so that their bodies learn this. Um, and anyway, everything turned out okay in the end because I have wonderful young adult children and I have a boyfriend who loves me. So thank you for being here. It means a lot. All right. I'm going to say goodbye now. Bye. I love you. Bye.